Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Gender Road Christian Church. It's good to see so many people this morning. I know there's some walking in. And thank you for joining us online, if you're viewing this online. Uh, whether you're with us this Sunday morning or later on in the week, we're glad that you can share this with us. Um, let's turn our hearts towards God in prayer. <clears throat> good morning, Lord. It is a good day to be here with you, to praise your name, to talk about your story. God, we pray that uh, you walk with us through um, hopefully the last throes of this pandemic. I know it's not gone, uh, but it is nice to be in congregation, truly in congregation with people again. And uh, be in the presence of one another. And we know that your, your presence is with us as well. So be with us throughout this week. We pray all of this in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. Uh, this morning we're going to start with a scripture reading from Mark. Uh, it's chapter 4, verses 26 through 29, the parable of the growing seed. Jesus also said, The kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground and would sleep and rise night and day, and the seed would sprout and grow. He does not know how. The earth produces itself, first the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. But when the grain is ripe, at once he goes in with his sickle because the harvest has come. May the Lord bless this reading. It is good to be a praying church. And we do pray, we have pastoral prayer every Sunday. We also, in a, in a few moments, we'll be praying together the Lord's Prayer, where we'll all be praying, thy kingdom come, thy kingdom come, on earth as it is in heaven, we will say, we will pray. What does that mean? Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come when the world will accept the reign of God and live for God's will to be done. Thy kingdom come comes when each one of us individually knows ourselves to live under God's reign and allow God's will to be the center of our lives. Thou, thy kingdom come. And so we pray it, and at the same time we live in a world where sometimes it seems there's a decline of morality, where fewer and fewer people are coming to church after the pandemic, living in a world where violence in the news, in Columbus, horrifies us, violence in entertainment desensitizes us, we say thy kingdom come and we live in this world and country and sometimes families where there is a whole lot of division. But we pray thy kingdom come and want our lives and our world to come under his reign. And so I'm happy today to bring a parable to you. It's actually two parables. The first one is found only in Mark which speaks to us, Jesus is speaking to us about the kingdom, the kingdom, what the coming of the kingdom looks like. So here it is, Mark 6, 26 to 34. Jesus also said the kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground and would sleep and rise night and day and the seed would sprout and grow. He does not know how. The earth produces of itself first the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. But when the grain is ripe, at once he goes in with his sickle, because the harvest has come. He also said, with what can we compare the kingdom of God, or what parable shall we use for it? It's like a mustard seed which when sown upon the ground is the smallest of all the seeds on earth, yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs, puts forth large branches so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. 
With many such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them except in parables, but he explained everything in private to his disciples. May God bless this reading of God's holy word. So as I, as I read this, I hope you hear the message in this of unmistakable hope. And it's found here, not just in the words, but in the pictures. I wonder if you can see it. Beginning with this picture of a man just scattering, scattering seeds. Who is the man? Is it God? Is it us as agents of God? The kingdom of God is God scattering seeds of love and hope and goodness randomly, lavishly, with abandon throughout our world, throughout our lives in all kinds of ways, the scattering of seeds. And now I have a whole series of pictures I hope you can see in your mind's eye. Pictures of the seed being scattered. It's a mother praying with her child as her child is going to bed. It's a grandfather having a conversation with his grandson while they're fishing. It's that card that you sent to the widow who is grieving. It's the music that we hear that touches our soul. It's the donation that we write and we give to help a church, to help the homeless, to help the Red Cross. It's the laughter shared by friends around a card table. It's making a sandwich for the Salvation Army. It's seeing in the setting of the suns, and I wonder if you all saw this last week, the rosy tones of the sky, and you see suddenly the hand of God's creative love in this world. Maybe it's this, the picture of seeing scripture read to a dying person. Maybe it's the phone call or the text that is sent to that person who's about to have another chemo treatment. It could be the easy conversation of men around the table at the wigwam on Thursday mornings. And maybe it's the gathering of women in a garden where they talk and pray and spend time with God together. I could make this whole sermon just a series of seeds that are being scattered. This is what we need to remember. Those seeds are being scattered constantly constantly. They're planted in the earth, in our neighborhoods, our church, our workplace, our families, and our hearts. They are seeds of beauty and creativity and peace and grace and mercy and justice. And most of all, of course, they are seeds of love. The kingdom of God is like a man scattering seeds of love and hope and life. Text continues. And he would sleep and rise night and day, and the seed would sprout and grow. He does not know how. He does not know how. So growth happens, not because of the actions of the man scattering the seed, the farmer. He only sows. There's no mention of watering, plowing, harrowing, fertilizing. There's no mention of that. The growth happens because of the mysterious action of God through which we, the world, becomes a new creation. The kingdom is coming, and we can't explain how. Now, we know because Jesus spoke of sowing seeds in another parable, we know that not all the seeds are going to break open and grow, right? We know that some are going to fall on rocky ground, some are going to be on thorns, some are going to be eaten by birds, some are going to blow away. So the message of this parable does not seem to be, take your time and sow it in the right soil. No, that doesn't seem to be it. The message of this parable seems to be, scatter the seeds, sow the seeds, and then wait and trust. How about that? It's kind of saying love and let go. Love. Anyway, love and trust. Hope is found 
in this message of mystery. Hope is actually found in the not knowing. Now, you know this not knowing thing goes against our human tendency that wants to know. We want to know, we kind of want to be in control, right? We want to have certainty. We want cause and effect. I do this and this happens. Richard Rohr wrote that since the time of the Industrial Revolution onward, the Western world has embraced the metaphor of the machine. We take Newton's third law of motion, for every action there is a reaction, and unconsciously apply it to our own lives. So if I take this step, it will necessarily lead to that. And you know, there's lots of books, and I don't know about you, I've been to workshops. I've been to workshops about, you know, 10 rules for successful relationships, five irrefutable, irrefutable laws of leadership. Um, even Robert Schuller was quoted as saying is, if it's going to be, it's up to me. But you know what? That's not how it works. We are not machines. The parable reminds us that we do what we can and then we trust God. And there is much we do not know. You know, life, I, I, know this is, <laughs> I know this is not new news. Life is sometimes very hard and often unfair. Yesterday, I had a Zoom call with my brother-in-law, who's about to have his fourth chemo treatment for cancer. Now, he's the husband of my younger sister who died 12 years ago from cancer. And they have a daughter who has had and is, is surviving, praise the Lord, leukemia. So I'm on this Zoom with my two brothers who, like I and like all of our children and grandchildren, have no cancer. And then there's this other family with lots of cancer. How do you make sense of that? You can't. We do not know. And here's, what, here's the other thing that I notice about myself, and I'll bet you too. In the absence of not knowing, we often make up stories, thinking that we know more than we do. And I have to confess how often I can fall into that trap. So you hear about somebody's cancer diagnosis, or that they lost a job, or that their marriage is in trouble, and so we just jump right to the end. I know how this story is going to end, and we decide, you know, it's going to be death. It's going to be financial ruin. It's going to be divorce. I had a conversation with a friend last week who was telling me about her eight-year-old daughter who was exhibiting some mean girl behavior. I think some of you know what that is. It starts young as a mother, of, a mother and grandmother of girls. And she said, I know it's going to get worse. And I said to her, you do? How do you know? We don't know it's going to get worse. Because here's what faith tells us. God is at work here. God is scattering seeds constantly. Seeds of love and healing and strength and mercy and peace. Our faith reminds us that God's steady and patient work is slowly, slowly, slowly accomplishing God's purposes. Faith reminds us that seeds are growing secretly in ways we can't see underground, not always within our eyesight, not even within our timeline, and certainly not within our understanding. Faith reminds us that we can trust that as the Spirit guides us to scatter the seeds, that the harvest may come up in ways that completely surprise us and that we never expected at all. And so that's what Paul means when he writes, we walk by faith and not by sight. So the message of today is very, very simple. It's just to remind you of the good news, the gospel. And the gospel, as you know, always starts with God. It does not start with us. And it's saying, thy kingdom come. God's kingdom is real. And it is here and it is coming. And in the midst of our ups and downs of our lives, in the midst of our worries and our despair, in the midst of our scheming and our speculating, our activity, our idleness, there is always 
there is always an unseen, mysterious, but life-giving power at work. It is our creating and recreating God whose seeds of love and service we scatter that then sprout and then grow. We do our work and trust God's loving power. And at the same time, I want you to picture this. You know, we're talking about scattering seeds out there. God's also been scattering seeds within us. God's seeds of love and grace that are <clears throat> continuing to grow as we come to Jesus, as we rest in his love, as we hear his word, as we follow his path of love and righteousness. I don't understand how that works. We do not know, but we trust. We are growing in faith and becoming more loving, more patient, more peaceful, and more gracious. And then the text tells us there's a harvest. Now what does the harvest look like? I wonder. Maybe it's a baptism. Maybe it's Gender Road Christian Church has a Sunday school for kids now. Maybe that's a harvest. Maybe it's that saint who is welcomed into heaven by Jesus. Maybe it's a life that is truly, visibly changed. The harvest comes in various ways, and it comes quickly and often surprisingly, and, and this is a big and, to thank God for Bible study, and Steve Jones said this at Bible study, the harvest contains the seeds that will then be scattered for new life and more life. So this passage is a picture that is saying to us, can you stretch your imagination and try to live trusting God will do more than you can even imagine? A mustard seed, perhaps, a tiny mustard seed that creates a bush that's so big that birds can nest in it. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine faith that can move mountains? Can you imagine cancer that goes into remission? Can you imagine reconciliation and a happy marriage even after there has been a betrayal? Can you imagine sobriety after decades of addiction? Can you imagine new life after the loss of love? How about nations that are unified by a shared vision of truth and justice and care for all people? How about a world where there's peace and enough for everyone and there is no more third world country? Can we see that picture of the huge harvest that can come from very small seeds? The kingdom of God is coming here as our faith grows, as we do our work scattering the seeds of love and grace and forgiveness and peace, waiting in faith, trusting the Lord, and praying, thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Amen.